one of the topics we've been talking about with our community this week is CMO tenure. Uh, new numbers have come out recently at its lowest point in maybe a decade, and, and that tenure is getting smaller and smaller. What is, in your mind, maybe uh, at the root of this issue, and, and how can we try to set CMOs up for more success? I think that there's a lot of pressure put on CMOs, um, and that pressure is driven by performance marketing and wanting to see results really quickly. And I think a lot of CMOs, like myself, really care about brand. and brand-driven work doesn't generate results overnight. Um, it is something that you have to feed and foster and build and nurture and really take great care of. I think um, Sprinkles is such a wonderful brand um, and to be able to, to have the privilege to, to see where this brand grows um, still takes time and it takes dedication. And so I think when um, leadership and or shareholders, if you're not seeing sort of that that change in the business very quickly, um, it's it can be hard for CMOs. And I think that's sort of what truncates um, a CMO's tenure. I, I, For me personally, I find it hard to, um, I, I would find it hard to not be in a position for at least two years to truly understand the inner workings of the of the business and the brand and, and to take it to the next level, level. You have to really live and breathe it. And so it's such a short amount of time. I think we have to allow for both things. Yes, we have to show results. Yes, we have to grow sales. We have to build the business. Um, but at the same time, that upper funnel work has to be there. It's so important to nurture the brand. Um, and I think for an organization to really understand that and support their CMOs and understanding that those two things have to work in concert, um, that takes longer than 18 months, than two years. What I've learned, um, and because I've had these conversations and I've been to a few events over the past six months where this has been brought up and talked about amongst CMOs, and um, a couple insights. Um, one is there seems to be a disconnect in the C-suite. And, and what I mean by that is I was shocked by how many CMOs do not have strong relationships with their CEO and their CFO or their CFO and or. Um, and that I think is a recipe for disaster um, because when things go awry or when things aren't um, meeting uh, objectives um, or if the business is, is challenged, whether it's macroeconomically or just from a sector perspective, um, you know, there's, if, if relationships are shaky, um, that's when the blame game begins. And that's when people are looking for reasons, right, to, uh, as to why things are going wrong. Um, and then that could lead to, you know, change in management. Um, and I was, I was actually surprised. I am, I guess, fortunate or lucky that I have a very strong relationship with both my CEO, who's my boss, and our CFO, who I view as a business partner, um, not as a bank. Uh, right, or not as someone who's just going to say no. <laughs> Many of the CMOs have come from the qualitative side of the house, historically, if you see. Uh, they are very good at psychology, sociology, anthropology, and design, and uh, you know areas which are relatively softer but critical for good marketing to be done. Now, when you put those folks in a high-tech environment or a technology-driven environment, which marketing has become, and marketing has become very quantitative with data-drivenness, they are finding themselves a little out of water. That's one part of it. Second, when the CEO asks a question, saying that, okay, we have given you $100 million, what exactly did you deliver? Show me the proof of performance. You can show performance marketing, but brand results are much more difficult to establish and show the, CA, uh, the returns on investment. Because of that, what happens is the CMOs who are not data trained and tech trained, they look at the CEO like you know, a deer caught in headlights that erodes the credibility. And that starts actually in, in a situation where the CEO loses confidence in the CMO. And then even if it is a very good CMO, because the CMOs are not able to talk the language of the business and to connect the dots between marketing and the business, they're being let go or they are doing so well and other companies are actually very anxious to hire the best of the CMOs, they get hired away. So this is what is driving the lower and lesser tenure. And what can be done, I would say, are two things. Firstly, CMOs have to really train themselves uh, if they have not uh, already trained or been trained before to understand the business, 
the business in number terms not just in understanding conceptually what the business is but to understand exactly how does the business make money and in a safe environment maybe they should reach out to some finance people outside the company or maybe some professors or to some seasoned uh, cmos and say hey help me understand and ask for being taught uh, how their business actually runs and also in, in many cases i advise my uh, team members go to your cfo counterpart and say hey can you explain to me how do we make as a company money uh, where do we make money how do we make money and what do you think marketing should do you will get tremendous amount of insights when you are able to do that your credibility as a cmo or as a marketer for that matter really increases in any given company so this is the first thing second i think also at least the associations uh, such as the ANA have to start doing an outreach to the CEOs and to educate them, both the CEOs and the CFOs, saying that, look, this is what marketing is. This is why it is critical for your company's future. And this is how some of the successful companies have demonstrated how marketing is really doing a fantastic job. And this is within your reach, if only you give a chance to your marketing team and to your CMO. I think it needs to be a concerted effort. And otherwise, right now, it's a little bit like an existential threat for many CMOs and for many marketing departments. The role is changing faster then we in the role are doing a good job of keeping up to date the people who are our key constituents and understanding what we're doing. So one of the things I always talk about is that, you know, we have an amazing CFO at, at General Mills, and I know that our CEO thinks he's doing a great job because he is, but he's also doing fundamentally the same job that CFOs have been doing for a long time. Uh, he's doing it in a modern and, 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 and an innovative way, but the role that I'm playing is, is totally different than what it was 15, 20 years ago. So number one, I think we have to make sure that we're keeping our, our bosses, our boards, our constituents up to date on how we're tackling the business problems that we're tackling, which ties into number two, making sure that people know that we are tackling business problems. I never want to be in the position of, oh, Doug's off doing something that he thinks is cool. I always say that financial questions need financial answers. And when that CFO comes to you and says, hey, there may be $10 million available to spend, what are you gonna do with it? Your answer better be a financial answer because that's what he's looking for. And that has been a challenge and it's not a simple challenge with an easy solution, but how do we tie back the work we're doing to those business outcomes and the financial metrics that ultimately we're gonna get graded on? The CMOs who have staying power are the CMOs who have relationships with CFOs and CEOs and have a high degree of accountability for both sales overnight and brand over time. And we know as marketers, you cannot keep the second part of that equation absent. If you're not cultivating and growing your brand, you are going to suffer in the long run, but you have to have an accountability to the business on a daily basis. So I think the challenge for CMOs today is to make sure that they are holding themselves accountable to the business for the pieces they control and then appropriately managing that conversation and that performance conversation with their leadership team and their peers. CMOs are expected to be experts and able to do everything. Um, and I think the role of the CMO has really dramatically shifted over the past 10, 15 years, where it used to be kind of traditional marketing. You had very much you know, clear ideas of what you needed to do, and your relationship with the rest of the organization was maybe less nuanced. Uh, today's CMO is expected to be everything from a finance person to a tech person to a creative, brilliant marketer um, who's got you know, big expansive ideas, managing a team, uh, and all of those different points create lots of points for either failure or disappointment. And it's also, I think, very easy in most businesses to blame marketing if something goes wrong, which, um, you know, if everything goes great, it was sales or product. And if everything goes sideways, marketing didn't do their job well enough. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's uh, the, the expectations of what a CMO is supposed to do have shifted. And um, I, I think it's up to CMOs to really think about outlining what we can do and what we can't do and be real clear with our leadership on you know, where, what our role is. Um, and that's hard because there's a, you know, they're big shoes. 